Might be riding this bike and next weekend. some treats um, I got these nice piston rings I'm gonna put in I, th I think these are fine but there were these other ones that were um, uh, Nicosil or whatever I forget what they're called but they're nicer piston rings honestly I've got about just a bunch of different little things to do but for tonight I'm all done I'm going to uh, go home come back tomorrow now yeah, maybe not even tomorrow because my treats don't get here until day after tomorrow so I guess I'll probably come back Wednesday. Anyway, I'm getting darn close with this thing and uh, in two days it's supposed to be 78 degrees although you wouldn't know it because in here right now it's 50 degrees but I'm trying to get her done. I've got a bunch of treats coming in. They might come in tomorrow but it'll probably be more like in two days. Got lucky on the Magnum. Came with an upgraded 15 millimeter bing. I'm getting ready to pull this thing apart and rebuild it, and make it pretty, um, and uh, get it ready to put on the bike. I can't quite put it on yet because I have to wait until um, until those treats come in. But I can at least get it ready for it. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to zoom in. trying to make sure your float level's right, the very first thing I do is I just make sure that the thing is absolutely parallel with the body of the carb when it's held upside down like that, you know, and make sure it moves freely, but that's the first thing I look for is just making sure it's perfectly straight across. If you got that, then you're probably pretty much there. I'll open it. I'm not putting the gasket on right now because I gotta open this thing up when I get my my new jets. So uh, I do have a couple a couple gaskets, but I'm gonna just hold on to those for now. Yeah, I know this camera angle sucks. I never realize until I'm sitting here editing and watching it back. Sorry about that.
All right, I think I got all the treats I need. Um, I'm gonna make the final push this weekend. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is put in this little tiny bulb I got uh, for the speedometer. There we go. That's easy enough. All right, first job down. Uh, I wish they were all that easy, but they're not. That's the easiest job. Actually, I lie. I've got another easy job. Another piece I bought from Treats. The, uh, the base for this guy. That fit? Mm, kind of fits, I guess. <laughs> That's not the best. Uh, and it's a 3D printed part, and I would give it a, I'll give it a five out of ten. It's halfway there. Damn, I'm gonna clean this thing up. It's, it's ugly. Yeah, I ordered the nicer one of these. It treats has two of these bases. One of them uh, is a quality piece and cost 20 bucks, uh, but they didn't have that one. So they sent me this one instead, which uh, I'm pretty sure a dude 3D prints like on a, you know, a little Chinese jobby job, um, probably probably in his office somewhere but um, you know clean it up a little bit and get it looking all right and it's not so bad let's see if I can make a fit yeah this thing's a piece of shit um, yeah let me grind it out a bunch more this thing sucks don't buy this one buy the Buy the expensive one like I tried to do, but if they try to sub you out, don't let them. This thing really does suck. And, uh, you know, I've dealt with a lot of 3D printed parts before, and you can tell when they're gonna last and when they're not gonna last. And, uh, and this one just screams break the first time I put a screw in it. That's that's my guess at this. I bet it doesn't last more than one put together. All right, got the first screw without breaking anything. All right, I'm not going too deep on these screws. I I'll leave it a touch loose because I don't want to break that thing. It's holding it on, so I guess uh, I guess I'm happy because uh, I'm not going to talk shit about it. It worked, or I guess I already did talk shit about it. I'm not going to talk any more shit about it because it worked. There we go. All right, switches are on. I also got a voltage regulator. I'm going to have to hide somewhere. I'm not. 100% sure where yet. All right, I'm gonna pause it while I uh, while I think about things. All right, I'm I'm getting ready to wire this thing. I've got everything, all the wiring looms run, but I'm sitting here um, with my my professionally well drawn out uh, electrical diagram. I have the actual Pook Magnum 2 wiring diagram. One thing I'm noticing is that out of the original stator, uh, it has a gray wire that goes straight to the tail light, which by everything I see, it looks to me like that tail light is constantly on. It's hardwired on. I don't want it like that. I want that tail light only on uh, when the light switch is on, when the headlight is on through the switch. 
So I've got to run one wire um, up to the switch up here so that I can control that tail light with the switch. But it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I, I'm, a couple things I'm doing weird. Well, not weird. I'm running a voltage regulator, which you really should when you move to CDI. Um, I think I'm going to mount the voltage regulator on the, on the stock bracket that held the coil with the old um, points condenser system. Uh, it fits perfectly. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is the actual CDI box. Um, I'm going to mount this up here underneath the, uh, the, the side panel. It's got a really long um, cord, uh, cord for, the, uh, for the spark plug, so I don't think there's going to be any problem making it all the way to the spark plug. Uh, yeah, other than that, really just, um, just, just being careful and, and double checking and grinding the paint off of the grounds. I, I, I like to have grounds right on bare metal. So, uh, so I'm going to make sure I do that and, uh, I'm going to have multiple grounds. I like redundant grounds. I'm probably not going to record it because it's, it makes for a really boring video. I'll come back and show you how I did it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Hide things as much as possible. Make it really clean looking. Get the tail light so it runs only when the light switch is on. And you know, of course, when the brakes are on, the brake light will light up. And just be careful and uh, conscientious about it. Okay, pretty much done with the wiring. I've got it all tucked back here. I used the uh, the whatever you call that circuit connector that was on there originally but I did switch up the wiring quite a bit I've got my new voltage regulator mounted there um, I've got the CDI box mounted up here and uh, and yeah I got the wires all nice and clean tucked away wrapped in heat shrink here's the spark plug wire to go right there and uh, I've, I've test fit everything to make sure it'll fit um, behind both the side cover here and the side cover here and it will so for now I'm calling this uh, wiring done although that's certainly subject to change after we get the chains on and uh, really start testing um, luckily I made by using that that circuit connector I've made it easy to go in there and troubleshoot I did solder a few connections um, such as like from the wire voltage regulator um, to to some power ones I things that I knew were grounds I also um, I also soldered uh, but but for the most part most of this stuff can be pulled right apart if I need to troubleshoot Well, this is when you know you're getting close when you start running fuel hoses. This is a weird one. It connects the two halves of the tank. Oh, shit. That's going to be hard. Oh man, I don't know how I'm going to do that. There it is. Gotcha. Uh, all right, we're making the final push now. I've got two and a half hours tonight, which is I think all I need to get this thing all put together. I'm not going to be able to start her um, because I bought some 
jets from another place, not treats, and the jets suck. So, uh, they don't even work. They're just not even formed right. So I did order some new jets from treats, which are supposed to get here Monday, and today is Friday night. So I'm going to get her totally put together. Um, everything except uh, jets in the carb, although I probably will put the carb on and hook the throttle up and everything. I'm going to get these cables lined up well. <laughs> oh, I love that thing. I can't believe that. That's so sweet. Holy moly. I love that. Okay, I'm going to start routing all the cables and get those hooked up perfectly. Uh, I'm also going to do the chains. As a matter of fact, First I'll do the, well I have to do this back cable before I do the chain. So let me just go ahead and do that right now. Really all I have to do on this is loosen up this bolt and hook it in. The last of that, these are both tightened down all the way. This one's tightened down all the way. Okay, yeah, it's time to hook up the chains. This is the dirtiest job in all of mopedding right here. Cleaning these old filthy damn chains. Look at that thing. 40 years of nastiness. Holy moly. I usually just do a little bit of purple cleaner on it first and give it the good scrub. Then I come back with some some bright cleaner, but this thing is especially dirty. I think I've said it before, but I'll say it again. I love the alignment system that Pooks have on their rear wheel. It's so simple and intuitive. Perfectly straight. This, uh, this 3D printed bracket I got, I mean, I've got it all the way tightened down and it's still real loose. I'm gonna put a little piece of rubber underneath to kind of take up the slack so it stays on s tight. New, uh, new grips. I have put these now on pretty much all of mine. These are like these Magura grips. They're dirt cheap. Probably, I think, maybe eight bucks for the pair. And they're the best ones. They're super duper comfortable. The old poop grips suck, like bona fide suck. So anything's better than them. All right, this side is wrapped up. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna zip tie these until I get everything situated. But this side's wrapped up. Oh shit. Here we go. So actually I dug through all my jets and I did, I have a 74 
which is probably a bit lean. I'm thinking I'm going to be around 76 or 78, but 74 is not bad. I'm going to, I'm going to put that in. We might could get this thing started tomorrow. Uh, where's my choke? Now, I lost the choke. I've got this one from another carb. I hope it fits all right. I mean, it looks all right, I guess, but damn. A well, life lesson when putting together Bing carburetors: wear safety glasses. Ask me how I know. When you're putting this thing in and you're pushing it down, if you let it go, that is a needle heading straight at your eyeball. Um, I've never put out my eye, but I've come damn close. Yeah, I've got to cut this thing. Not very much. And it's already been cut out. You see somebody went in and modified it. I need to modify it a bit more. i got to cut this whole... i got to cut this whole thing out. And to make room for the filter, I'm going to have to cut this part off and maybe the bottom of this. my choke. Sweet. Just put back together now. Hee <laughs> hee.